If killers laugh at the law in a town, it isn't long before they take over. That's happening in your town, mister. What are you going to do about it? Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875, the Carlton Hotel, headquarters of the man called Paladin. Mr. Paladin! Oh, good afternoon, Mr. Paladin. Well, you're looking very pleased with yourself, hey, boy? Oh, well, a big wedding will happen. Wedding? Whose wedding? Not yours. <laughs> no, 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 no. Cousin to hey, boy. Oh, It's a Chinese wedding. Many people much is celebrating. Well, that's fine. I'd say, by the way, you're acting that this doesn't happen too often, huh? <laughs> oh, no, 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 Mr. Paladin. Does not happen often. Oh, hey, boy, very happy. Uh, make uh, many preparations. Everybody have a good time. You will come to wedding? Hey, boy, if I'm in San Francisco, I guarantee I'll be there. Yes, sir. You just let me know when and where. Oh, very good. Yes, uh, hey, boy, let you know. Uh, I go now. No, no, wait. Wait a minute. Didn't you want to see me about something? Oh, yes, sir. Almost forgot the telegram come for you. Oh. Yeah. Well, let's see. Are you sending the answer? Yes. Tell him, have gun, will travel. <laughs> This is Frank Knight speaking for the world's most honored watch, Longines. In the conquest of the Old West, men won fame through feats of bravery and daring. Today, things are different, but fame can still be won. How wonderful to win a Nobel Prize in science, a Pulitzer Award in literature, an Olympic gold medal in sports. These great honors are symbols of achievement. In the field of time, did you know that Longines watches have won more great public honors than any other watch in the world? This is true. The highest authorities have ranked Longines watches as the finest achievement in the science and art of watchmaking. Yet a Longines, the world's most honored watch, styled with distinction, cased in precious metal, promising a lifetime of faultless timekeeping, is not costly. Many models are priced as low as $75. Visit your authorized Longine Whitnor jeweler. He will be honored to serve you. The telegram took me to a town near the Nevada border, and when I got there, my job was completed swiftly without bullets. I collected my fee and started the long ride back to San Francisco. The third day brought me to a town called Woodland, nestled in the foothills of the Sierra Nevada range. It was like a thousand other towns, one dusty street with boardwalks on each side, flanked by rows of wooden false-fronted buildings and the inevitable saloon and general store. I decided I might as well get some supplies. Hello? Anybody here? Help me. Please. Oh, well, here. Let me, let me help you up. Get you to a chair. Oh. Oh, easy. Easy, easy now. Uh, there. Please, a doctor. I need a doctor. What happened, old man? Who did this to you? Get the doctor, please. Where is he? And off the street, a white house. A white house. I'll get him and be right back. For three days, the little old man hovered near death. I found out his name was Hans Riker and that he owned the store. I also found out he was alone and needed help, so I decided to stay on. On the fourth day, the doctor said Hans was going to be all right, and by the end of the week, he was beginning to move around. Give me a cup. i pour you some more coffee. Thank you, sir. Well, good to see you up and around, Mr. Riker. You better take it easy. Remember what the doctor said. Uh, what does the doctor know? 
If you ask him, is a man going to live or die? And he will tell you he doesn't know. So uh, the man lives or he dies. Either way, the doctor can say he was right. <laughs> <laughs> well, just the same, you're not as strong as you may think you are. Yeah, that is true. I am not strong, but I, I would not be here at all if it were not for a man named Paladin. Ah, uh, I did nothing, Mr. Riker. Well, uh, that, of course, is nonsense. And, and I want you to know that an old man is grateful. Well... I did only what anyone would do. Uh, well, perhaps I am more cynical than you. <laughs> perhaps you are. Mr. Riker, huh? will you tell me now who did this to you? Uh, that is not important. Not now. It is to me. Who beat you? Why? <laughs> I'll show you something now, my friend. Show you something only a few people have seen. It is what is in this box that causes my fear. Ah, you will open it, please. Oh, beautiful. Ah, take it out. Look at it closely. Well, that's wonderful craftsmanship. It's wonderful. Ah, and it's a good gun, yeah? It certainly is. The balance is perfect. It's just perfect. Where'd you get this gun, Mr. Riker? Ah, you see me now as a storekeeper, Mr. Paladin. But in the old country, in Germany, I was a gunsmith and a very good gunsmith. You made this gun? Yeah, yeah. I have made many hundreds of guns in my lifetime. And to the one you hold, I crafted a mate. A uh, twin? Yeah, 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 mm. a twin. You spoke of a fear, Mr. Riker. What fear? Well, to a lifelong friend, I gave the twin weapon, crafted by my own hands, and it killed him. It exploded the first time he shot it. There was a, a floor somewhere that I did not see, and my friend died. Well, you shouldn't blame yourself for that. Uh, the day my friend died, I swore never to make another gun, Mr. Paladin, and I have not. No, I sold my guns, all of them but the one that you hold, and came to America. I see. Then, two weeks ago, a gunfighter who was called Link Doby rode into town, and he found something he wanted here. A gun. This gun? Yeah, that gun. Well, how did he know about it? Well, one of my friends I have showed it to, he was thinking too much, and he talked loudly. And at first, this Link Doby was, was nice. He asked me to sell the gun to him, but I couldn't do that. Oh. Then what? Well, then he went back to the saloon and drank, and then he came back again and asked me, and then when I still said no, he beat me. Why didn't you just give the gun to Doby, Mr. Riker? You said yourself it's defective. Nein, nein. I said the twin to the scan has a flaw, but this, this gun here, it is perfect. What about the law here? Mm, Sheriff King, he is like me, he is old, and a man like Doby, a gunfighter. The sheriff cannot stop him, no. Everybody here, they are afraid of Doby. Mm. I think I'll talk to Sheriff King. Nein, nein. Yeah, you have done enough, my friend. Please, do, do not concern yourself with this. I will give Dobie the gun. No, don't do that. Not yet. First, let me see what I can do. When friends drop in, let your hospitality show you're sociable in the modern manner. Pepsi, you know, is the favorite of the smart and young at heart. Be sociable, look smart, keep up to date with Pepsi. Drink light, refreshing Pepsi. Stay young and fair and debonair. Be sociable, have Pepsi. 
Have you tried a Pepsi lately? The sheriff's office sat defiantly alone in Woodland, faded and old, like the man in it, who sat with his feet propped on the desktop that had been scarred by too many years. And he looked at me with pale blue eyes, dimmed and defeated by age. So, that old fool went and hired a gunslinger, eh? No, no, Sheriff. Mr. Riker didn't hire anybody. I'm here on my own. Well, now, why don't you just turn around and leave on your own? I'll leave when I find out what's going to be done about this. What's done's my business, mister, not yours. I'm making it mine. Now, what are you going to do? What do you expect me to do? Get dopey. Now, you listen to me, Mr. Paladin. Things was all right here till you come in. We ain't had no trouble. You say you had no trouble, Sheriff. Well, maybe not. But you don't know what trouble is until a man like Link Dopey laughs at your law. And he's going to keep right on laughing until he gets sick of it. And then he's going to start shooting. Maybe one of the people he kills will be a tired old sheriff. Now, wait a minute. And then he'll leave your town, Sheriff. And he'll only be the first. There'll be others, dozens of them. Because this will be the town they know they can buffalo. Come over to the window, Paladin. You see that street? It ain't much, but it used to be. Just a few years ago, there wasn't a man or woman walked down that street. Didn't have a lot of respect for me. And then all of a sudden, the gunfighters found out I was old. Couldn't handle a gun no more. They started coming, and I was afraid to stop them. Sheriff, the man that says he isn't afraid is either a liar or a fool. Thanks, Paladin. But there ain't nothing I can do. Not no more. All right, Sheriff. Then I'll handle it. Dobie will be leaving town tomorrow, one way or another. I'm looking for a man called Link Doby. Is he here? I'm Doby. My name is Paladin. Well, what you got to say to me, mister? A few days ago, you beat an old man, Doby. You beat him, and you told him you were going to kill him if he didn't give you a certain gun. Well, that's none of your affair. That's between old man Riker and me. Not anymore, Doby. I represent Mr. Riker. And you're going to have to kill me to get that gun you're after. <laughs> Look here, I got no cause to let no shootout with you. If I haven't given you cause yet, Mr. Doby, maybe this will. <laughs> oh. Why, you. I kill you. Now you have cause, Doby. But I'm going to let you off. I'm going to let you leave town. Tomorrow morning by 8 o'clock. That's how much time you have to get out. Tomorrow morning. 8 o'clock. Germiest germs of all, upstairs, downstairs, or in the hall? No, they're in the bathroom. And to wipe them out, indeed, a little dash of Lysol's all you need. Did you say that a little dash of Lysol brand disinfectant wipes out bathroom germs? I distinctly said bathroom germs. 
Yes, ladies, a little Lysol in your cleaning suds is the really easy, modern way to clean your bathroom each week because Lysol makes your favorite cleaners work better, including many that claim to sanitize. Lysol kills disease and odor-causing germs, many deadly viruses, too. Disinfects from one cleaning to the next as nothing else can. Use Lysol, either the new pine-scented or regular, next time you clean the bathroom. Uh, my dear boy, I distinctly said the bathroom. A little dash of Lysol does it all. Costs as little as 29 cents. I had breakfast with Hans Reicher the next morning, which was quite an experience. Hans called it gobble Frühstück, or a knife and fork breakfast. It consisted of eggs, bacon, sausage, hot rolls, soup, and potatoes. It was a good start for any day. You do not eat, Mr. Paladin. It is the German way of cooking you do not like. <laughs> it's yeah? a German way of cooking I do like, but <laughs> there's a limit to what a man's stomach will hold. Ah, but you do not eat much. Already I have eaten more than you, and you are young. You should eat more than me. I think perhaps it is the trouble with Lint Dobie. Mm. I cannot stop you from doing this thing, my friend. Oh, I don't think there'll be any showdown. Dobie is brave when he knows he can win. I doubt that he's in town now, but I better make certain. You stay here, Mr. Riker. I'll check the livery stable to be sure he's gone. Dobie's horse wasn't at the livery stable, but just to be sure he'd left town, I went to the hotel. The clerk told me Dobie had checked out at 7 o'clock that morning. I headed back for Hans Riker's. Paladin! Huh? Paladin! Oh. Dobie, I seen him. Where, Sheriff? Where'd you see him? I was just coming out of my office. I seen him sneak into Riker's place. Riker? Come on. Mr. Riker? Mr. Riker? Mr. Riker, where is he? The gun. Where's Doby? The, the back, out back. He has the gun. Sheriff, get the doctor. I'm going after Doby. Exactly what I tell you. Put that gun in your holster. Real easy, like don't move fast or you're dead. That's the way. Now you turn around. Now, you're looking me in the face, Paladin. And you're gonna die. Talking so big, make me eat dirt in front of all them people. You ain't so big now. Just about my size. That's the way I like it. You should like it. Hiding there, showing on your face, and the gun you stole. You better draw, Paladin. Because you ain't never going to get another chance. Now! Dobie? Paladin! Yeah, over here, Sheriff. I I heard the shot. What happened? That was no shot, Sheriff. The gun he stole from Hans Riker blew up in his face. And so once again, after so long a time, I got out my tools and I worked on a gun. After you left me yesterday, I worked on it, Mr. Paladin. And into the night I worked and I created a flaw. A flaw that would make the gun blow up when it was shot. Well, why didn't you tell me this morning, Mr. Riker, when I had breakfast with you? Well, I did not think I should. You told me you did not wish me to give him the gun. And I fixed it because I feared for you. If Dobie had killed you, then I would give him the gun. So when Dobie came into your place after I left, you thought he had killed me. Yeah, I was afraid, and I gave him the gun. But he hit me anyway. He, he, he was very angry. Mr. Riker... You saved my life. I thank you. Ah, gratitude from the heart is more valuable than gold. Is that not so, my friend? Yes, Mr. Riker. That is so. (laughs) 
Uh, package come for you, Mr. Paladin. Mm. Oh, thank you. Hey, boy, I... Hey, boy, what's the matter with you? You look terrible. Oh, you notice, huh? Notice? I'd have to be blind not to. What happened? Oh, well, you, uh, you remember a wedding I tell you about a long time ago when you could not attend? Yes, I remember. Yes, a wedding happened. Well, what does that have to do with your condition now, hey, boy? Oh, wedding was a Chinese, Mr. Paladin. Uh, hey, boy, I know it was a Chinese wedding, but what does that to do with you now? Oh, uh, oh. A Chinese wedding is much celebrating, many people, many things to eat, many things to drink. Oh, you needn't go on, eh, boy? I think I understand. Oh, oh please, he means a paladin, not a laugh so loud. <laughs> audible head fall off. <laughs> Ooh, oh, oh. Hey, you take a package now. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, one moment before you go lie down, though, hey, boy. There may be an answer required. Yes, oh, Mr. Paladin. Oh, hey. Beautiful gun, Mr. Pilot. Yes, hey, boy, it's an exquisite gun. Oh, here, there's a note. <sighs> My friend, these hands once again broke a vow and crafted a gun. The hands have not lost their touch. Please, you will accept this from a grateful old man. Signed, Hans Riker. Oh, very nice, Mr. Pilot. You send answer? No, no, hey, boy. No answer. Are you a game fan? Do you like bridge, perhaps, or checkers? How about these games? Are you familiar with them? Games like Spell It, What's in the House, Can You Take It, and Next on the List. These are highly entertaining games concocted by Art Linkletter, who says, What's a party, especially a house party, without games? There's fun following house party guests as they give their all and vie for a variety of exciting prizes. You'll meet celebrity guests, too, and chuckle over hilariously uninhibited remarks from Art's panel of youngsters. You're cordially invited to join the party, the house party, each weekday right here on CBS Radio. The welcome mat's always out at Arthur Godfrey time, and the Gail and Drake show, too, both sending still more easy listening your way weekdays. They're always well-stocked with entertaining chit-chat about this and that, plus sparkling music. House Party, Arthur Godfrey Time, and the Gail and Drake Show. Light, bright listening in the distinctive pattern of programming you always enjoy when you're tuned to this station and CBS Radio. Have Gun, Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, he is produced and directed by Norman MacDonald and stars John Daner as Paladin. Hey Boy is played by Ben Wright, who also appeared as Hans Riker. Tonight's story was written by Ray Kemper. Featured in the cast were Ralph Moody as the Sheriff and Lawrence Dobkin as Doby. Hugh Douglas speaking. Join us again next week for Have Gun, Will Travel. Have Gun, Will Travel.